Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and I'm Sarah Cray and we are Let's Make Art and We Letter a New Project every week. And this one, you will notice Sarah and I are together, so we're doing a combo project together. Oh, oh I should show <laughs> So what we're doing is it's a wreath and we're going to incorporate wreath with lettering, which we've actually done before. We did mm -hmm. in the a Thanksgiving project if you go back and see that. But we wanted to do is I thought it'd be cool to incorporate both lettering and wreaths and show that you can create a watercolor look with these guys. We already did a project that was blending with the brush, the blending tool, but we're going to do this where it's blending with just a brush. So you can do that. And for the project, well, so let me go through. The supplies that we're going to be doing are, there are three different color Tombow dual brush pens that we're using. So... The first one is three, four, six, and this is C green. And then, what number is this? One, nine, two, asparagus. Did you know this was called asparagus? I did know that actually. <laughs> it's a, <fun> show. <laughs> it's it's a love, it's a lovely color. Just funny, it's lovely called color. asparagus. And eight, seven, three is coral. And so if you look at this project, what we're doing, like I said, is a wreath. And then instead of a full quote, we're going to be focused on, I thought it'd be cool to offer a project that maybe if you wanted to do this for a baby shower or you had a wedding coming up that you were attending, what if you made a gift instead of buying a gift? And so I chose it for this one, I did the ampersand sign, but what we're gonna go through is, we'll go through the, the there's three steps, there's only three steps in this one, is we're gonna do the monogram and I wanted to show that there's different ways that you can mix up your letters. So don't just go on autopilot and just write the way you think you write. How can you mix it up? So go through that. The second step is the brush pens and laying out your project. And then the third one is when Sarah's gonna show us how to add the wreath around your lettering. So those are the three steps. So first is what I want us to do is practice I'm gonna flip this paper over. So if you have our box, you will see this download or this PDF. If you don't have this, you can go to our website, letsmakeart.com and go to the kit section and find the wreath monogram and download it there. So for this one, what I wanted to do is show a different alphabet that you can use because you only will have either one letter if you're doing the ampersand or if you wanna do a monogram for a wedding what I've learned is that if, they, if you do three different letters, it's the middle, I'll draw it out. So what's, my, I'll do you and Michael. Okay, Michael. Michael, so M is the third letter, and then Cray uh -huh. is C, and then Sarah. So it goes hers, his, last. And then typically the last is bigger in the middle. So you can play with that. So for this project, because we are doing um, a circle wreath, you can actually choose if you want to make it circular or more oval. Mm -hmm. But we're focusing less on the thin on the up and thick on the down of lettering that we've been learning so much. And I, what I want you, I challenge you to do is explore different ways to write those three letters or the one letter that you're doing. Okay, so what I would like you to do is, like I said, pick your letters that you want to do, whether you're doing three or you're doing one. And you can either do this if you wanna practice with your brush pen or you can do it with a pencil. But what I challenge you to do is fill up your page. See how many different ways you can draw one letter or a couple different ones. So as you're doing this, Sarah, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna do E for my oldest name is Ella. And I think oh, these she's colors, awesome. she's so great. She's seven, and I think these colors actually match her room really well, and I think it'd be so cute to do a monogram with her first initial in it for decor. Which is another great idea that you can just do this as, yeah, a gift for your daughter. For your little, for your babies. I love it. Okay, so maybe you can write out different ways that you can think of to draw ease, and you can okay. draw them big or small if you want. Um, but again, we're not focusing on thin on the up, thick on the down. So as Sarah's doing that, I wanted to talk about when you're looking at this, so this particular style, what I did was I just added some extensions and we talked about flourishes in the Bloom Where You're Planted project. But if you notice, that's essentially what I did to this one where is I added other loops to the beginnings of them or on the ends, I just extended it a little bit further. So you can play with that. So you can use this as a guideline. Another thing that I wanted to talk to you about is 
we, so when you're thinking about this is you have this space that you're dealing with and we've talked about the shapes of letters. So what I want you to think about is because this is an oval shape, if you're doing three, I probably, when you want to um, go for your final one, is if you were to do three ovals like that, you'll notice it won't really fit in this space. So what I would do is, Keenan, do you want my, oh, you have this, oh, this yeah. is a cool one. They're gummy erasers. Ooh, I don't use these very often. Are you serious? They're so great. Because I feel like they get dirty all the time. Well, yeah, but you just, after they get dirty, you like, it's like Play-Doh. Ah. And then it's clean again. And it only lifts off the, the graphite. It doesn't actually ruin the paper. Really? Yeah, because usually erasers will rub the paper off, the fibers, and that's how it erases. Gummy erasers just rubs off the graphite. Well, I'm learning all these things because I've been using, well, I still like the eraser that I use because it's, well, have you seen the eraser that I use? Yeah. yeah. And I like different ones but too, but those are usually on. my go-to. Well, gummy erasers. And they're just called gummy. Thanks yes. for the education. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I was saying was if you do that, so you have two options. You can either make your circles, your circular shapes smaller to fit inside or if you're thinking about this compositionally, what if you instead make your letters, if you're doing three, instead making them more oval. Mm, so longer. Yes. Okay. To fit in. So as you are filling out your sheet like Sarah's doing, think about how you can make them more, yeah, oh, like that. I have a question. Yes. If I wanted to do like her full initials, like Ella Jane Cray, would I do like E, is there like a pro E, K, J? So when I see that typically, I would just make them all the same size. Oh, okay. Because otherwise you think, you. They're some people married. might think, or some people might think her first name's C. C. Okay, okay, okay. Um. So yeah, if you were to do all three, then I would probably make them, yeah. Okay. I love that. Hmm. So once you do all that, I'm not going to go through everything. I just want wanted to explain different ways as you're figuring out your layout and what different styles you want to do is on your final sheet. So when Sarah typically does watercolor, she has it where the pencil, you, it's okay that you draw the pencil directly on here. There are two different ways. You can either do that or because these brush pens are so um, transparent, you can also do what we do is where you use a light box. So I was saying you can decide if you want to do which one you want to do. What I would suggest doing is, do you want to, on the back of yours, actually you can just take this. Or are you going to do an E? I can do Or are you going to three? I don't, what do you want me to do? No, you can do, I want you to make what you want to make for her. I haven't decided. So you can think about that. But okay. I was going to say, do you want to just draw yourself an oval? Or do you want to use the light box to make it the same? I'll just, I'll just do a light box so it's the same really okay. quick. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. So what I was going to say is I would have your sketch like I did on your either print it out or make your own on just computer paper. So figure out your layout first and figure out what you want your look to be. And then we'll go to the final one. So where's this final one? And then the other thing that I wanted to talk about was how to figure out, this is a question I get asked, is how do you figure out your own style? And I think this is a good lesson to go back to when you, you want to make something different. There are little changes like adding a flourish or changing the size or changing the angle of your letters that you can do to create your own style. And that's the beautiful thing about lettering. So take this exercise to do that as well. Then when you're ready to finish the project is, do you, ooh. <laughs> That looks like a C, but it's an E. Maybe it's I was going to say that too. could be a C. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why I'm not going to do E, J, C, because I feel like my E's and my C's are really similar. Are similar? Yeah. You can I do... like funky E's. Yeah, I do like, you like that. I was going to say, or you can do it like that if you want to change it up. But I, I never do... get the proportions right on those, like the loop that's sizes. That's something we can talk about. Because so, actually, I'll show different ampersands while you're doing that. Because the E is an ampersand oh, or similar that thing. That's bad. beautiful. That's not too what? bad. So, when you are doing ampersand signs, if you want to do this for a wedding, this is one that I really like to do. Or how do you usually do ampersands? 
I literally make up a symbol and just hope that people know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that, that oh, just a plus. That's, that's pretty much what I do. I do like uh, this. Do you like that? What or that? Oh, that's cool. I I'm so, I literally switch it up every time. It's not I something say, I, I don't feel comfortable even... with. <laughs> Well, there are so many different ways, as you can tell from us, how to do an ampersand sign. So I just wanted to show you a few ones. I like to do it like that, like that, or if you want to do them more like a three. Yeah. That's a, no, that's a backwards three. That's an E. This is an E. Yes. That's what I do. Backwards. But that's similar to this, except it has a little floopy. Yeah. <laughs> is that right? Is that the technical term? Yeah. A floopy, yeah. So you can do that, and you can add things like that. But mm. what you can also think about, so when I was saying is making this a little bit taller, so what you can think about is extending this. So what, if you were to do something similar to this, is make your shapes more oval mm. rather than more round, circular, yeah. Okay. Oh, well I guess they're both round. But yeah, rounder, circular, yeah. oval. You got it. Um, okay. So, as you're experimenting with that, I'm going to do it on here just to have it lay it out. So, as you're doing this, take this. This is my computer paper. This is not my final one. And you can lay out your lettering. So, when you're doing this, I'm going to make one for my friend who's getting married next month. So, his last name is B. Her last name is Noel. And his first, or her, sorry, her first name is Noel. His first name is Eric. So I'm gonna do that. What I suggest doing when you are laying this out is it will probably help if you're doing three to start with the middle one just so that you can figure out that spacing first and then draw accordingly. So I'm going to draw within my oval. It'd be like that. So again, I'm not focusing on thin on the down. Thin on the up, thick on the down. I'm just focusing on drawing it. So then I'm gonna do the end and the E. And the reason, other reason why it's helpful to do it first on here before going to your final one is you never know also what you're dealing with. So this B is so big mm -hmm. and you notice that I kind of had to squish my E a little, mm. or yeah, mm -hmm. my E a little bit more. So I might just move it over a tad or you can adjust from there. Cause the thing is that you never, you don't know what letters, everyone's letter is different. But if you're doing one, is this your final? Yeah, this is my final one. Okay, so you can do it on there, or you can do it really lightly if you would like. That's what I figured. I'll just try and draw it really lightly and then make adjustments from there. Okay, yeah, that totally works. So Sarah's going to work on the Bristol paper. Does that an oh, E? Oh, nice. Is that an E? That's a really cool E. Yeah? Yeah. Keenan, thank you. You're welcome. Maybe I'll make the top bigger. No, that... Mm. So then the other thing that we're thinking about is don't take up the whole space because we are going to be drawing our, oh, right here, our, sorry, reaching over you, is our leaf. So you don't feel like you have to go all the way. You can leave some space for the different wreaths that you're going to do. Yeah. Okay, ready? Oh, actually, yeah. I'm just going to, I did one take and I'm like, let's do this. That looks great. Let's do this. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to, so Sarah's going to do it on there. I'm going to do it actually with my light box. So we are first going to draw our, our letters first, and then we're going to go through the wreath. So if you want to, so another thing that you can think about is mm -hmm. we learned what phallography is, and essentially phallography is fake lettering. And so what you're doing is you're imitating the thin and the thick lines. So what you can do is you can either choose to do that. So she's going to add a thick on the downstroke. Because when you are, which actually, hold that thought. I'm going to hold that thought. Okay. Because yeah. I'm going to show you while we're doing it so you, I can explain what I'm talking about. Is So I'm going to trace over my NBE. That would have been funny if their initials were NBD. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was just thinking that. <laughs> NBD. I was actually trying to figure out what E could also stand for. To make it funny. Eleanor. Yes. That's her but daughter's I was name. Of the joke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just start naming great. all the words that start with E. Exit. 
emergency. You know what? That would be a pretty exit sign, though. That would be. Oh. <laughs> the fancy psycho sign. What if we get custom exit signs for our store? Done. I'm going to make Perfect. that happen. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect that answer. <laughs> um, okay, so what I was going to say is that you can do this two different ways. If you want to go through and you can use this side of the brush pen or you can use the smaller brush side, but I was going to say, Sarah, as you're yeah. doing it, whatever color you would like to do is if... I'm going to just draw next to yours so you can see. Okay. So when I'm doing mine, my end, for example, is not as big, so I can still get a thick, even though it's that size. But mm -hmm. when you're drawing so big, it might not be as easy to get such a thick line. Yeah. I can't. So you also, what I suggest for you to do is to break it up into maybe one, two, okay. because your hand is gonna cramp yeah. as you go through and do the whole thing, just okay. like how we break it up. But I was gonna say is that that might not be as, you wanna make it a little bit thicker because I can't make it as thick because that's such a big E. Yeah. So what you can do is you can take the same concept as the filigraphy and you know that this is thicker. So just thicken this up a little bit more. Okay, so you're when just you're doing, doing multiple it. strokes. Yeah, and the beauty is that it won't matter because after we're gonna show you how you can blend that so it doesn't matter that you can see these mm -hmm. lines. Mm -hmm. So that's what I wanted to say for you as you're going for it. I'm, I'm going for it. Go for it. Okay. So I'm going to be using the brush pen. So I am going to be thinking about thin on the up. And I'm going to just push really hard because I want to get a nice thick line. And if I need to add more, I will. But thin on the up, thick on the down. So, and so I needed to take that in two strokes because that was such a big stroke. These are making fun noises. <laughs> N, B, so thick on the down. Then on the up. Ooh, I made that N. Oh, so what I'm looking at is I realize that I made this a little bit longer, which it does need to be exact. I'm just gonna make this a little bit longer then to mimic. So I noticed that I'm just gonna thicken this line up a little bit just to make it a little bit thicker. And so if you want, you can decide, maybe it's all thick and you don't want there to be any variance, or you just want these to be just a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna thicken that up. Okay, so then, oh, pretty. I like that, that I realized. I know, isn't this color great? Yeah. Um, so, Sarah did hers in the dark one, yes. and so I did mine in my light one, and so I'm just gonna add a little bit of shadow to it because it's a darker color. If you have a darker version of that one, or you can make it darker on that side if you want. But what I was gonna show is I'm not adding a shadow, so we've learned about shadows on the outside. I'm actually just gonna add some shading to mm. the left side of this, and I'm just gonna add, you can either use this side or this side, but I'm just gonna add just a little bit darker on the left side. So it's the similar thing that I've been teaching where my light source is up from here and it's hitting here. So it's just gonna add some depth to your lettering. So just make a really thin line and then we're gonna blend it in in a little bit. So you're kinda just sketching through that. Okay, now for the fun part, or do you think we should wait? and do all the blending at the end. Let's do it now. Okay. Yeah. So these pens are awesome because they are water, they're not water resistant. <laughs> I was gonna say water resistant. They're not <laughs> water resistant. They, you can blend them. Water soluble. Yes. Right? There's another word I'm blinking on that. 
I think water soluble is the word you've used in the past. Is that what I've used? Uh -huh. I don't know why I feel like I'm blanking on the word. Okay, water soluble. The whole thing is that you can make turn them into watercolors. And to do that, what we're going to do, I'm gonna reach over you soon, is take so if you don't have a paintbrush, you can still do the same technique with the colorless blender, which we did in the magic project. So you can show, see how to do that. But because we have Sarah here and she does watercolors, I wanted to show that you can do the same thing. And so what we're gonna do is just add a little bit of water to your paintbrush. You don't want too much. So one thing that I do wanna mention is that this paper, it's Bristol paper. And so it's not, a, it's not technically made for watercolors, but you can use it. So don't use too much water or else you'll rip through the paper. So what we're doing is we're just gonna blend through. And if you notice, I just have barely any water on here. And I'm just gonna blend that darker color into the lighter color. And it is really relaxing. And so that way it's less of a harsh line and you can le still leave that line, but we just wanted to give you another way to use these cool pens. And so it's cool because Sarah just made hers a little bit darker since she used a darker color. Oh, so that I realized I used too much water and just kind of bled through. So I'm just gonna quickly move it through. So it's okay if that happens to you. But like I said, I would suggest not using less water than more water. And if you have watercolor paper, you can use watercolor paper. And actually this would be a good project to do this on because you're doing so much. So you can totally use watercolor paper. Just know that when you're doing your lettering, it just might Sorry. not be, it's okay, might not be as smooth as you're used to because we're used to such a smooth surface. So blend that through. Okay. Then we finish. Mm. Ooh, that got really light. I like how light that color is. Yeah. Ooh, that's fun. Oh, I think I smeared. Oh well. Happens to the best of us, you yep. know. Happens to <laughs> It's okay, I'm gonna keep going with it. So that was the second step. Now we're gonna go through the wreath. Now it's the your wreath. Turn. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have our wreath. And there's a couple ways that you can approach wreaths. One way is you can look, you can like decide beforehand where your chunks of flowers are going to go and then fill in between. Or you can just like start on one side and keep going around. Um, the benefit of, of doing like the placement of the florals first is you're kind of pre-planning it and you're just filling in space. Where if you do it the second way and you're just kind of going, nothing wrong with that. You just have to be aware of composition a little bit more and making sure that it feels even all the way around. Mm. So yeah. I'm, gonna t I'm gonna show, so we're gonna put our flowers in first and then we'll put in our larger leaves. And this is how I approach floral compositions in general, which is big elements first, medium elements second, small elements last. So then that way you're like big guys are first and then you just kind of fill around it and you can help with the uh, uh, composition of everything that way. So grab your coral marker. So should I add a line? You should add your oval shape, yes. So what I like to do is I like to start with the line, whatever my shape is. If you freehand it or outline it, nothing wrong with it. Sketch it lightly. Um, and even if you, even if I wanted to, I could even like softly kind of erase the line that I have now. You will be able to see the line in some spots. And if you look at your reference card, you can actually even see the pencil line. Super minor. Through that flower. It does not matter. Don't let things like that trip you up because you literally probably didn't notice that till I just pointed it out. So. Correct. It's not, it's not a thing. Okay. I actually still can't see it. So. <laughs> well. <laughs> okay, no, we're, no, we're, I was going to make a <laughs> joke about your glasses, no, like, nope, not doing that. Okay, so there's a couple different ways that you can approach doing the flower. So, and I can show you both. So, one way that you can do is I'm going to start by making my flower shape just with markers. So, whatever side you feel comfortable using, if you want to do the small side 
or the brush tip side. I like to use the brush tip side because I can get a thin and thick line just depending on what I fill in, so it's just versatile. So, and usually I want the center of my flower to be what's going through the line. So that way it's kind of even, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So there's the center, it's going through the line, and if you see it, just about matches up mm. on all of them. And that's how it doesn't feel too heavy if the flower's on the outside or inside. So I'm gonna start with making like my petal, and then you just fill it in. And you just make petals around and leave a little space in the middle for your center. And again, these can be totally, these are probably a little bit too perfect. You can make them organic shaped, which is like kind of more flowy. And then you just take your moist brush and just blend. And then I even like to adjust and connect them a little bit more so it has more of a natural feel. So I'm literally just blending out with a damp brush the color that is already there. And I'm extending the line a little bit so it has that really strong watercolor feel to it. Oh, on the outside of it. Yeah, so I'm not staying just within my initial outline. I'm going around it and working that line a little bit more just to give it more of that natural, loose, watercolory feel. Also, I will say, because this, if you're watching this, you're probably more familiar with lettering, is that when we're using this, we're drawing more circular motions rather than a specific hold and drawing a perfect line. This is a really loose, different style. So if you have a different grip, you can play with that. Just don't want you to feel restricted if you're doing it wrong. Yeah. So I'm kind of using, I'm doing more of a horizontal hold with my brush and using the side of my brush because that just fill, that just gives me more of a thick line and I'm just kind of like moving that color around. And then some parts, I mean it's not going to blend out perfectly all the time, but at least we'll softly smear it enough to give you that watercolor look. Yeah. Could one of you ladies push that cup of water up? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, then other way you can do a flower is what I did on this one and why it's so light compared to the other one is I did, so you just kind of eyeball it. So it's gonna be like right bottom right hand corner. Again, you can make it however you want. If you want this entire thing to be flowers, you can totally do that. I just try to space my flowers out around it so it doesn't feel too heavy in terms of color. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to like bottom right hand corner, I'm gonna do actually little like the start of petals. So they're gonna be like little triangles. So it's essentially, I'm just doing the inner part of the flower. And if you wanna wait for me to be done so you can see what I'm actually talking about, you can do that. I might do that. Okay. So here's the start of my petal. And then I'm just gonna take my brush and blend out. So it's a lighter color. So I'm still pulling that color, but the actual shape of the petal is really, really soft and light. And if you want to do like one at a time and blend them out, if I'm not sure if drying time strongly matters with these. I'll try that on the next one so you guys know. But it's, it gives us a lot like a softer pink. Yeah, see how pretty that really light pink is compared to how dark that. that is? So it just is, is giving us a mix of variation, which is one of my favorite things, is just kind of messing with the values and messing with the colors that you're getting. So there's differences between them, which just adds visual interest in a, in a picture. It's like a cherry blossom. Yeah, and you can make these as big or as small as you want. And Even. we can always adjust. Okay, so those are my two. Now another, the other flower that I did was kind of more of an angled flower. So when, when our brains think of flowers, and this is where it's really hard with art, is our brain tells us one thing, and then what we actually see in real life is very different. So when we think of a flower, we always think of it face down, center, petals around it. That's what our brain is telling us how flowers look. 
but usually when we see flowers, it's from an angle because we're like taller than them and it's all about perspective. So the perspective of this one is if it's more on the side. So this is like if this flower was actually starting to turn away from us, what would that look like? So because of foreshortening, that first petal is actually really short and tiny, and then you can see the back petals really well, and that gives us the uh, illusion that that flower is on its side and turning away from us. So I'm actually going to take my brush pen, I'm gonna go to, kind of to the right side here, and my first petal is gonna be kind of a long, like a soft curve, like that, yep. And then my actual petals come out here. So if this is the center of my flower, and you can, uh, we'll shape these ones so it's easier to see. So there's my flower on its side. And then you're just gonna use your paintbrush to blend those out. And then another compositionally thing to, that I noticed for this one is that because I had my E, I had all this negative space right here. So I chose to use my flower to fill that rather oh. than doing it right here. And so it might directly hit it. So those are other things you can think about as you're deciding where to place your flowers. Because it doesn't need to be the same as ours. And you can even like go back, like if I go back to my really soft flower and if I want to like kind of do another layer on top of it, you can. You can absolutely, just as Nicole said in the beginning, because this isn't watercolor paper, you don't want to do too many layers or else it will start to degrade the paper. Did you yeah. add, so I noticed that, or do you do that after? I do that after, and okay. I actually just use straight coral for the center of those. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So. Our next flower is gonna be at the top and then we're gonna have another side one right here. So try and just like kind of space it out. If you do your next flower here, you can, but then that only gives you like, then these are, it's gonna get a little caught up here. So just try and like, I have this much room left so I'm, I can fit two more flowers comfortably around here. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I space them. So I'll do this one soft again and I'll actually do it petal by petal to see if that changes the blending of it. I wonder if I could even like... You can. You can? Yeah. So that was another thing I was going to say is that if oh, you... Yes. Can... Her plate. My plate's on my desk. Do you need a palette? Yeah. Or a palette. We have a dirty palette right there. I just don't know how that will work. Ooh, this, this palette's prettier. <laughs> well, this palette has watercolors on it, so... But what I was going to say is that as Sarah keeps going, so I, I showed this in the Magic one where we used a, um, a plastic bag where you also can do that. But another thing that you can play with is if you... Ooh, fun noise. <laughs> you literally color directly on the palette and you Makes add a little sense. water you can pick that up. So oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, so it's literally like you have your own watercolors, but it's just a simple pen. So that's another way that you can do it. Or like I did, you can use a plastic bag if you don't have a palette. Probably anything plastic or glassy, I would assume, yeah? Yeah, you can use a um, a Tupperware oh, yeah. lid. Oh. Okay. I love this color. Isn't it pretty? And then my last one, and of course, and I don't know if you guys noticed this, but the ones on the side, I have them facing towards the middle. You can have them facing out. It's totally up to you. I'm gonna just keep on going towards the middle. So here's my first petal line. And this can change in thickness. If you want to do them really thin or if you want to do them way thicker, it's still going to communicate the same way. And 
and then just use a damp brush and pull from that color that you just laid out. And I know that when we do when we do flowers and even I fight it is we want to have them perfectly round and perfectly like the same shape each petal but that's not really true to how flowers are most of the time. I mean, I guess it depends on the flower. But don't be afraid if like one petal is a little bit bigger or if they overlap and connect weird because that actually gives it the illusion a little bit more that they're real, that it's a real flower. One, two. You're a real flower. Real. I'm a real boy. <laughs> Good job. One more time, one more time. Yes. I'm a real flower. <laughs> Sweet Pinocchio. Okay. Oh, did you do that technique? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Now we're going to move on to our larger leaves. So, what I did, and I mixed it up, and I did the same thing, similar to how we just did the flowers, where some of the leaves I drew and colored in completely and then just used watercolor to blend, or I would just start and do like the stem and the base of the leaf and then use water to lighten it and continue the shape of the leaf. So you guys can do whichever way you feel comfortable. I'll just start. So like coming off this one, I have a leaf here connects to my stem. So you're just kind of drawing at this point here. And one thing you can do is you can use the dark green to do the base and the tip of the leaf. Grab your light green to fill in the middle. and then use water to blend them together. And this darker green, when you get it wet, it actually turns into a really pretty blue. Ooh. And you can also do layers like after I blended this out, if I wanted to go back and make this more green, I could maybe do like my more green, like lighter green layer on top. So cool. And actually what I learned too, so this is nice and wet, right? I can actually pick up color and use this color to make another leaf. So I'm literally, I'm not doing any more marks. I'm pulling color. Mm -hmm. And just to show you, I'll do a little tiny guy right next to it. And this is all from pulling the color from the first leaf. Yeah. And then that's great because it creates your eyes creating depth. Yeah. And that's why that value change is so amazing. Okay, now we're going to do, let's do. Oh, the big leaf. That's okay, I like ah. big leaves. <laughs> so on the other side of that flower, um, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to use only light green because here's the thing. Usually we get into this idea, like what I just did, and so we'll tend to just do that same exact thing over and over again. But switch up your markers, switch up your colors, switch up your values, because if all of these leaves were the same exact green and the same exact value, it would seem way more flat than it does now. So it just makes it a little bit more interesting. So really like force yourself to be like, no, I'm only gonna use this light green on these leaves here. So to go ahead and draw it out, fill it in. And then just use your paintbrush to blend. Now when I do leaves, and this is the great thing about leaves, is there's so many different kinds that no matter what one you do, it's not gonna be wrong. I like it though when my leaves have a bigger, like a thicker middle, and then they narrow in at the top and the bottom. This one didn't really do that, but that's okay. This top one did. Yeah, very nice. 
And then sometimes what I would do is even after I got it wet, if I needed to like, Got you like might want to wait till it dries, but you can go in and add detail lines like the vein of the leaf. So don't do that yet because it'll just blend out, but that's something we'll do at the end. And so just keep going around. So usually my large leaves, if you look, my large leaves usually are coming out of my flowers. So kind of go around your wreath and add your large leaves coming out. And there are some where I just did like two, like, like so, where here's one. And here's one. So it doesn't even have to be a stem. Like mm. they can add, be almost like leaves coming out from the flower. Let's do it. And then the other, the other technique that I was talking about, which was you can do your stem like this. And then I can do the beginning of my leaf, like so, kind of like how we did our petals. Mm. So they're like little V's. And then you use water to blend and get the rest of that leaf shape. And then that's a really great way to do it because you will naturally get a value transition doing it that way, which will create depth which is when you guys, that's what you're talking about with shadows and values. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah. One color, that's one color. That's awesome. And you're creating so many that it doesn't, they all don't have to be perfect. They all don't because, have to be perfect. There's gonna be yeah. so much going on that the one that you don't like they can't pay attention to or they won't pay attention to because there's so much and also you'll notice that I actually have the leaves going multiple directions they're not all facing upward in a circular motion I have some going down and I have some going up mm. so don't you don't have to worry about that but in other wreaths you can make it so they're all one direction that's totally an option I think it's easier if they're I just think it makes it look a little bit more filled in when they're going both directions because then they usually like overlap, run into each other and create that kind of like fullness. That makes sense. And you do have to kind of massage into it. So if you notice this one, I can tell that I did my outline. And so I need to kind of massage back into it a little bit more to create a smoother transition. So it's not as obvious. And if for whatever reason you can't create that smooth transition when you like outline it and then blend out, you can use that to your advantage and make it look like it's on purpose for detail. So like after mm. it dries, go back in and do a few dark in some other places and then people are like, oh yeah, that's like, that's how I can tell that it's a leaf. That's a detail on purpose. You know what I mean? Yeah. So just own it own pretty it. much. <laughs> Do you, here's a question for you, because yeah. it's different for everyone. If you were going all the way around, do you draw like this, or do you like to turn it and then draw going up? Okay, wait, rephrase your question. Do you, so it, I was about to draw this leaf, and it's kind of awkward for me to do mm -hmm. it this way. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering what you like to do. Do you, oh, yeah. do you turn it and totally then you draw? Turning. Yeah, you can totally turn your paper around. Like, especially when we're doing circular things, you can absolutely turn it. The only thing that I would suggest is if you do that a lot, make sure you do bring it back because depending on how your paper is turned, you'll automatically start painting as if that's the orientation of the mm, paper. And so then it might yeah. get a little lopsided. So usually I'll paint something and then I'll turn it back and then see if I need to make any adjustments. Love that. There. They call that orientation confusion. <laughs> it's a term we just made it up. They, Only they, at they Let's Make that. Art. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can start to two-tone it. So if I want to do kind of big leaves coming out from this side flower, right? I can start with my dark and with my light. I left a little space in between there for blending purposes and then mm. blend. So it has a, has a warmer green on top and a cooler green on the bottom. So play with that also.
I would probably, I was just thinking about this, start with one side of it. If you are like me and you're gonna flip your paper, because I realize that I don't wanna smear too much. So I'm just gonna start and do all this side. And if you need <laughs> the guard, remember when we did a live and I said a guard and you asked what that was. <laughs> yes. A guard's just a piece of paper to guard your life. Because I tend to smear sometimes. And it's so helpful, I've never used that before. And I wish I would have. I know. And also don't feel like the big leaves have to come out both sides of the flower. If you look at this side leaf right here, I mean this side flower right here, I actually have tiny flowers right next to it. We're just not oh, to that part. Yeah. So like keep that in mind where like just start to fill it in and like it's okay if you leave some spaces bare because then that gives you the opportunity to put smaller size flowers and smaller size leaves in there also. Good call. Is that what you did? I just went for it. So what I did for my, yeah, yep, that's great. So what I did for my little like bud looking things is I leave, I kind of do like alternating circular lines around it similar to how I would paint an actual like rose flower and then I take my water make sure there's no green on it you can still have green on it and then I just kind of blend it out from there in a circular motion but I left a white center well that one got a little bit that's okay and these don't have to be perfect circles too because the same thing like some of them we'll, we would see from the side so they would actually be like thicker on the top or the bottom Do you have a reason why you do three? Because I tend to do three too. And I wonder if we learned that in school. Yeah, it's a design thing. Yeah. Like back bunches of uneven numbers are more aesthetically pleasing than even numbers. That's what I thought. But it's okay if you have even. But sometimes the composition or room doesn't leave space for three. Maybe you only have room for two. That's fine. Like don't force it. Yeah. If it's not there. And we're using a two, but you can use, if you have a zero from when we were doing some lettering with that, you can use that, just a small brush. I think probably even like, because rounds have a, a tip, a tip no matter what size, so even like a six you can use if you need to. <laughs> we're both thinking. Oh, <laughs> what were you looking at? I was just looking at the marker itself. Yeah, I think I like doing the thicker line. They're the thicker. And just keep just keep going, just keep filling it in. Oh, that's looking pretty. I love the shapes of these. They look like um, they remind me of tropical leaves. <gasps> like a um, bird of paradise. Yeah, or like ferns. You know? Oh yeah. I was gonna say they kind of look like um, mermaids' tails. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> now that I said that. <laughs> well, if you look at some leaves, they look like mermaid's tails. Yeah, right? Like this one does if this was connected. Oh, totally. Yeah. <gasps> little mermaid. Little mermaid. Tucked under. Oh, I'm going to tell Ella that. Did you find the mermaid hidden? Oh my gosh, she'll love that. Okay, I'll tell her that. Ella and Nicole are best friends. <laughs> it's so cute. It was cute. I love her. I do too. It works out. Also, some leaves are shaped like pies. Or mouths. <laughs> or <laughs> My brain was still on lettering, so I thought you meant uh -oh. no. <laughs> It's like, I don't know. <laughs> well, this is a lettering tutorial, so it would make sense why you're thinking of letters. Oh, it's hilarious. like a okay, Keenan. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got uh, Alphabet's never been my strong <laughs> I love these like big ones coming straight. And if you go, and I should say like, you don't have to do your stem for your leaves directly on your outline. You can see here that I have some coming out from it 
and some that are on it. Mix it up, do both. If you have such a strong, if you do follow this line, you can do that for sure. It's gonna give you a, your eye a strong direction of where to look, which is not bad. That's not a bad thing at all. If you want it to make it feel a little bit more full, then you need to have multiple layers. You cannot just do one single stem connecting all of these and then be like, why does it look so empty? Mm. So if you're looking at this, I have one, two, three, four elements going on in one little section. One, mm. two, three. So that's why it looks so full because it's layered with multiple things. I'm not just doing one single and one single. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to like have a lot of things going on and running into each other. That's gonna give it a nice full look. And another tip I can give you all that I've learned from doing leaves so often is that sometimes, do you ever say this where you do the S curve or the C curve? So some leaves are a C like that, mm -hmm. or some you can do, let's do one out of here, are an S. Well, I guess that's an, a backwards S. Still counts. So you can either do an S and then a C on it like that to curve around, or you can do, they're, oh, both, yeah. they're like two different S's. Yeah, yeah, so this yeah. is more, yeah, that's an S and that's a C. And that's two, both of them. I don't like the way that looks, but I'm gonna go for it. Go for it. I was just, I was trying to it's teach like a little. green banana. Oh, I was it's trying like to teach a, a lesson. green banana. Thanks, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> One time I was I was teaching someone how to do leaves and they're like, oh my leaves look like pickles. <laughs> because they just didn't have like a point at the top. Oh. And that's why. So if your leaves are looking pickly, you just gotta narrow in that top of the leaf and not round it out. And yeah. It yeah. won't look as pickly. Yeah, wow. Why did I do that? Don't be angry at yourself. I'm going to fix it. Just do it in other places. <laughs> <laughs> balance and it out. Balance it out. That's what I do all the time. <laughs> Where I'm like, oh, just I just added a really big element. Well, I got to put it somewhere else now. I also just decided it would be funny to call leaves plants feathers. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> put in your plant feathers here. These are very unique plant feathers. <laughs> They're like green bananas. <laughs> or eyeballs. Eyeball. Or lips. Or like the shape of a mouth. I'm trying to draw a perfect <laughs> mouth shape. And then as you're filling out your like bigger slash medium leaves and you still have some small spaces, that's where the smaller elements come into play. I, I didn't know if like people were like, I've already painted in all, all my large ones, what do I do next? So you just work your way down. So after you put in your large elements, you go in and put in your medium shaped elements, which could be like these three flowers or this kind of flower that I have right here. You can put those in and then go to the tiny little like little leaves to like connect them. Oh, you do it like that. Yeah. So like Here's, Oops, I don't know. that's okay. Here's my large elements, my large leaves. Here's, here's like a medium. And then now I'm like, okay, I have a tiny little space where I can connect these two. So I'm going to do a tiny little stem with tiny little leaves. Mm. And I usually just do the marker tip with that. And then like blend it out with a paintbrush to give it that watercolor look. And you can also do like buds coming out. Oh, I love that. So just like mix it up, play around with it. Little buds. Like Sarah and I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keenan, sorry you weren't invited. Sorry. To that. <laughs> I also thought Ella got left out for too, so. Oh. Oh, my little Layla. Ooh, yeah, bad idea. I got very antsy and I blended my... Oh yeah, when you're doing the bed, usually with the buds, I like to do the stems first and then I'll go in and add in the buds at a different time so then they don't um, blend together. Like that. 
It's okay if it All happens. Good. It's just one tiny thing. Meh. They won't even notice. Keep going. <laughs> Do you both want to scoot your paper on a skosh to the right? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> too far. Too far. Too far. Is a that skosh? Better? You just said a skosh. Is that or better? Half an inch. <laughs> Not a full inch. Now for like this kind of flower, it's this kind of same thing that I did with that where I kind of like do a small line and then I kind of like build from there and the bottom is thicker than the top. Mm. So it's a bunch of like circular alternating lines that get a little thicker as or longer as I get down and then you just use your brush and blend and then I just left the center Aye. white. And then now it looks like a flower that has layers from the side. A rose, if you will. Oh. I know you're impressed, Keenan. I, I heard like that. I like that. Oh. Yeah. Roses. I know that. Roses. Keenan, do you have a favorite flower? I do not have a favorite flower. I need you to decide right now. Tulips. Really? Yeah. Well, because you saw them in person? Well, because... <laughs> oh, I just got one. Because <laughs> Because why? Cause no, it's just because, like, they're the flowers that I give Suzanne on Valentine's Day. That's oh, that's roses. right. That's right. Aww. And then also I can paint them. He can paint them. I can paint, paint a mean tulip. He can. Do you know what's really funny is my husband got into his head that my favorite flowers are yellow roses, and I have never once said that. And so for years, he would get me yellow roses. Oh, no. And one time I just felt like asking him why. <laughs> and he was like, well, it's your favorite flower. And I was like, no. <laughs> it was so cute. This kind of sounds a lot like the skateboarding story. <laughs> what is that story? Okay, my okay. husband and I met when we were really young. And I might have lied to him and said I was a skater. And I wasn't. I was just trying to impress him. And he didn't find out for a very long time. <laughs> Like recently? <laughs> I think probably till years later. And then so even at one point, he got a skateboard out and was like, oh, I have a skateboard for you. Let's go skating. And I was just like, shoot, I'm found out. And then I was just like, I can't. I hurt my ankle playing <laughs> soccer, so I can't skateboard right now. And he's like, oh, OK. And he like didn't think anything about it. Wow. I know. He loves you. <laughs> She's the best. But I was like 14. So. He yeah, that makes you. it okay. <laughs> it does. You're like young. <laughs> Get out of here, Kaden. <laughs> yeah, that makes it okay. And whenever a, a spot is feeling a little too bare, that's where the little tiny guys like come into action and are so helpful. If you're like, just feel like it needs more something right here. Well, you know, add in some like, and sometimes another thing that I like to do, I didn't do it in this one, but like little three dots mm. is so helpful. If I'm like, it just There's. needs something, just, I'm just gonna do three little dots there. I and then it too. fills in that space, it gives a pop of color, and it makes it cute. So like, use that to your advantage, you know? What were we doing that we said looks like berries? That's why I looked at you. Because Keenan noticed that before. I'm trying to think of the project. Yeah, what name. was it? I okay. can't think of any of the project's names. I usually rename them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't care. Um, I'm going to use this as a teaching lesson because I realized exactly what I said you shouldn't do. I just did. What happened? So I did a leaf, and I didn't like it. So I went back over it, mm -hmm. but it was one kind of wet. And it added a different layer. So can you see how I picked up the paper? Oh, yeah. Can you, can you zoom in on that? Yeah. On my mistake? I'm already on it. OK, so you can see that I picked up the paper. So one, actually, kind of, it looks like real leaves. Yeah. I just yes. created a texture. Really cool. But I was going to say, if that frustrates you and that's what's happening, I just, that's why that happened to me, was it was kind of wet, and I went over something too much. So OK. Note to self. And the other thing that, now that I'm doing this also, that I'm kind of paying attention to, and if you're doing the same thing, is my E is really dark. So I need to make sure that some elements in my wreath are also really dark. Mm. So it matches and they feel like the same. If you're using the lighter green, you're fine. 
I think that's fine, but I'm seeing how dark my E is. And so, and that's not a problem. I'm just gonna go in and like really darken some elements. darken some of these elements, kind of like how I did this shading on my E. I'm gonna do that on some of my leaves after I've already watercolored it and let it dry. And I probably won't blend that out. I'll probably just leave it. Mm. But now see how dark that is. It matches my letter more. And so they feel more connected. That makes sense. What is your favorite flower, Sarah? I actually, I have a few. I, I love poppies mm. in general, but also, um, and I, it's my favorite flower, and I should know how to pronounce it, but ranunculus? Yeah, ranunculus. Yeah, I love ranunculus. Ranunculus. <laughs> no, keep it. Oh. No. <laughs> ranunculus. I just love how the colors, the shape, and how many layers of petals there are. They're like, I just really, but then I really like poppies, how like, tissue papery the petals are when they're like big and wavy. Yes. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. There's actually a kind of poppy. I think somebody just shared it in our watercolor group page actually. It's in it's in like San Diego, but it's white petals that are like huge and then big fuzzy yellow centers. So they look like eggs. They look like sunny side up eggs. Oh. But they're poppies. Well, that's why they'd be a favorite. They're my, well, I, I love me some good sunny side up eggs. Yeah. And it just made me, I just loved how delicate they were and the tissue papery feel of them that I was like, you. Oh, I need to look those up. You should, because they're beautiful. And I want to paint them all I the days. where the berries came from. Yeah? Bloom. Bloom. Oh, Bloom. because I did, yeah. Bloom. Which, if you like this project, this is pro that's another one that's probably good, the bloom one. If you like this project, check out our other project. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. He's <laughs> just mocking me. <laughs> it's okay. I'm, I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a bully. <laughs> And even if like, you might even think that your stems can only come out from your flowers. No, no, my friend, I have no. this little, I have this little guy coming out from the middle of nowhere. Like nobody pays attention to those, so it's okay. I have stems coming, stems coming out from like other leaves. They don't think so hard about it. Just be like, this is my world. I'm creating. This is my wreath. I can do whatever I want. I'm gonna have leaves coming out of the middle of other leaves. <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> I've never seen a branch grow like that. <laughs> well, can it? You're right. But I don't get out much. <laughs> oh. And really use both sides of the brush because when I'm doing the small little leaves, I like to use the little, do you call this the pen side? I switched it up. Okay. I'm right. going to call it the felt tip side. I'm going to the tip. I'm going <laughs> to Sorry. I'm going to I'm going to Okay, I'm just going to call Bless it the you. pen side. I'm going to call it the pen side and then the brush, brush side. side. Okay. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was trying to say. We're having way too much fun for this to be Make it entertaining. Hopefully. Wow, that looks like a... <laughs> I don't know. It looks like a succulent. Yes! Yeah. I did that on purpose. I know. <laughs> what does it look like to you, Keaton? <laughs> I'm really excited. Keaton doesn't get out much. He's not sure. Chrysanthemums. Oh, wow. How do you, you know what... No, he doesn't. Said a word. I'm not sure what they are. <laughs> that's a real is. flower. Well, that's what I figured. That's a real flower. <laughs> Michael wanted to name our daughter Chrysanthemum and call her Chris. Huh. I'm like, why, do, why wouldn't we just name her Chris? Yeah. I love that. I gave him a hard no, so we named her Luna. <laughs> Which I love more. <laughs> and she's 
Awesome. She is awesome. And also your little buds, they can be in sets of, they can be in pairs, they can be in sets of three, it doesn't matter. Man, I love this leaf so much right there. So good. Are you gonna add another one to balance it? Or you think it's gonna be it's I think one it's cool balanced. One. What do you mean? One cool one. Oh, I thought oh. you meant <laughs> oh, like do only that just one. More, do more of that of that around my painting. <laughs> You're like, that's cool. Are you going to, like, make it better? <laughs> <laughs> Not what I meant. <laughs> I know. I'm just teasing. <laughs> now I want to go outside and look at leaf shapes even the, more. There's so many different kinds. Look at Sarah's eyes. And then, like, if I wanted to do, um, like, longer ones, kind of like how you're doing, is it's the same shape, except they're just long and skinny. So instead of doing, like, short, round ones, like, meh, meh, it's like, meh, meh, it's meh, 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 We're not going to be allowed to do projects together anymore. <laughs> So fun. The project had never ended. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's why I was really impressed with these markers because I've never like tried to do this with these before. And I asked her to do it. Yeah, and she's like, can you try this? And I'm like, sure. And they were so versatile. I loved it so much. I loved that you could layer it. I love that you can get a strong value the same way with watercolors. They were, I, I was really having a blast painting this wreath and everything that time it like blended out beautifully. I was like, oh my gosh, look at this. I think I actually went around everybody and was like, this is Tombow marker. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't watercolor. <laughs> That's awesome. You didn't show that to me. Well, I was like, Keenan, this <laughs> I don't like you very much, I guess. <laughs> Just kidding, Keenan. And to think I ate half of that cookie you gave me. <laughs> Did you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to not eat a cookie. How could you not eat a cookie? That's the real question. That's a great question. What are these? I know I've seen them before. Uh, I, I do a blanket statement like, oh, lavender. But I was going to say they do look like lavender. Or a uh, lupin. And we're back with Sarah and Nicole. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> okay, so we did our wreath, and it's mostly dry or drying. And now we can you can go in and do some little detail elements on top of it using your Tombow markers. So like for our flowers, I can go in and use the pen side of my coral and put in the little dots. Mm -hmm. So it's just really concentrated for the center, so you're just kind of pressing a little bit harder so it's super corally. And then if you want to go in on some of your leaves, especially if they're really light in value, you can, like I have some right here where I can go in and if I want to do some like little veins in there, you can. 
And I went in, since my E is so dark, I went in on some of my leaves and you can go in and really like darken up the base of some leaves to get that really dark, dark green Ooh. like that. And these ones I'm not really too concerned about blending out. And it's always a good idea, like I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, it is really dark in this area. So I kind of want to, I feel like this area needs to be, have a little bit more darkness. So this is where you take a step back and you're just like, look at the color of some things. And if one area is too much of one color, um, then go in and like add that color other places. So for me, I feel like this chunk is just lighter. I think it's probably my flower. So I'm actually just gonna add like a nice strong dark leaf right in there. And I'm just gonna layer it right on top. And then that automatically has helped balance the entire thing a little bit better. So it's really helpful to step away from your painting for a second and look at it from a distance or even snap a photo of it because that is going to give you a good idea of color, composition, value. Mm, that looks great. I'm going to do your dots. Yeah, dots. Dots. Ooh, yeah, I can do more dots. Berries. Berries. Don't eat those ones. <laughs> I like the dots. They just add some, like, I don't know. It adds, like, whimsy, I feel. Yes. I was trying to think of the word, and I was going to say freckles. Obviously, I don't know this. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Thank you so much for showing all of us that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I feel like I learned a lot, and I hope you had fun playing with watercolors or turning your Tombow Duo brush pens into watercolors. We want to see what you create. And maybe, no, I was going to say we can share it in both of them. But we'll. They we, can totally share it in both. Because this is what I say that. In, yeah. Can you say that? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm the boss of that yes. area, so I can you do can that if I want. Both of those <laughs> like, I will absolutely share this in our watercolor Facebook group. Let's make our watercolor and say that these are Tombow pens. And you can totally play with these like you would watercolor. Yeah. Yeah. So we have two Facebook groups. We have the Facebook, the Let's Make Art Watercolor, and then Let's Make Art Lettering. So we, we can post them in both, share them. We want to see what you create. And is there anything else? No. No. Thanks so much That's for having it. me on. This yeah. was so fun. Thanks for being on the joint project. <laughs> okay, bye.